Hey guys, we're covering the next article here. Um, very interesting. This is from the BBC. And I believe this is Scotland. Oh, this is in Ireland. Um, the Christmas, since Christmas is right around the corner, there are obviously going to be people who decide to buy animals for any holiday, whether it's Easter or Christmas or someone's birthday, right? Um, which really birthdays aren't holidays, but that, that's okay. You know what I mean. You get the gist. So the Christmas puppy sales funding organized crime gangs. I saw this headline and I'm like, what? <laughs> what? So let's get into it. I, I wonder what Ireland is experiencing um, and what the heck is going on. Because international news with dogs? Yes, sign me up. So we're looking at a really dirty old crate filled with puppies. Looks like maybe border collies and chihuahuas really weird to have and to choose to breed i've never seen someone breed both border collies and chihuahuas like as a as a quality breeder like that's i i don't know if that happens i've not seen that it's they're just so different breeds i don't know i don't know let's see let's see so scottish spca Scotland or Ireland? many dogs have been illegally imported from ireland via the port of Oh God, I can't say this. Um, Karen, 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 I don't know. In Dumfries and Galloway. Parents who buy a puppy for Christmas could be funding serious organized crime. Scotland's prosecution service has warned. It says puppy farming is a source of revenue for gang networks and that people should not buy a pet from unauthorized breeders. This is so weird. How? What are they? What? The trade is often carried out through online platforms such as Gumtree, free ads, and pets for homes. Yeah, I've never heard of any of these online things, but I bet you. I bet you. Interesting. Um, the market for illegally traded puppies is believed to be worth 13 million. A report published last month by the Scottish Multi-Agency Strategic Threat Assessment or SMASTA, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, um, also found up to one in four buyers could be purchasing a dog reared in appalling conditions by criminals. Some sought after designer breeds such as Chow Chows or Cavapoos. How, how wait, Chow? Chow chows are chows are considered a designer breed? No. No. No, 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 no. That's not. Like, could we name more opposite dogs like a chow and a cavapoo? Like, can we like name more opposite type dogs? Just what their personalities are, what their jobs are were they were bred to do. It's like saying. It's like, it's like saying, oh, I breed Malinois and, and, um, Pomeranians. <laughs> I'm a Malinois Pomeranian <laughs> I just, I'm just, this is so opposite. They're so opposite. Can be priced up to $3,000. I mean, I mean. Yeah, I mean, if you try to get a doodle mix of any kind in the States, it's, I think starting is 3,000, right? Starting off, I mean, often it could be like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't know why if you want to pay that much for a mutt, but, you know, if, if, it's, if it's the right dog for your household and family, kudos to you, you know? Um, many animals later suffer serious health problems and either cost their new owners huge vet bills or are too sick to survive. True. Black market puppy farming also seriously impacts thousands of properly licensed breeders in Scotland who are selling lawfully. So they're being sourced from Scotland? Because again, I, I don't, man, I wish I knew more about like ports and things. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Laura Bushan, producer. No. Procurator. Ooh. Been a day. <laughs> Been 
the day. Laura Buchan, Procurator Fiscal for Specialist Casework at the Crown Office. Whoa, what is, hold on, what is the Crown Office? Oh, that's not, that's not. Crown Office Chambers, Crown Office UK. The Crown Office, also known especially in official papers as the Crown Office in Ch Chance Chancery? I haven't, I, listen, give me grace. I need grace today. I need grace today. Is a section of the Ministry of Justice. Justice. Okay. Crown Office and Procurator Fiscal Service is the independent public prosecution service for Scotland and is a ministerial department. Okay. All right. I think we got that. All right. Cool. I get it. <clears throat> Urge those planning to buy a dog over Christmas to double check the legitimacy of sellers. Should always do. Should always do. She said, we realize the popular attraction that many people have of buying a puppy as a Christmas present. Organized crime gangs have infiltrated this activity and continue to use the profits they accrue from it to inflict widespread harm on communities throughout Scotland. I kind of want to know what's going on with these organized gangs. Like, is it like, you know, carjackings? Is it just stealing? Is it drugs? Is it all the above? Like, I... I that would, I would like to know what, like, is going on over there because. Um, illegal puppy farming has grown significantly among serious organized crime gangs. We have an acronym for that, too, SOCG, Serious Organized Crime Gangs, as a vital way of raising finance. These gangs are involved in the distribution of illegal drugs and money laundering. Okay. All right. So we got, we got, okay. According to the SMASTA report, they are currently, there are currently three serious organized crime gangs involved in the illicit puppy trade and a further seven groups recorded as having links to puppy farms and dog trading businesses. Demand for puppies during the pandemic soared to unprecedented levels and that increase has led to a huge jump in price. Really? Really? I wonder what their rescue and I wonder what the dynamics of like the whole um like dog culture is over over in Scotland because I'm sure everybody here remembers when everybody when the shelters were empty during the pandemic because people were adopting pets because they were working from home, they couldn't leave, etc. And then there was a bit of an influx. I don't, I remember scouring stories, but I didn't see too much about it. So I don't know how much of an influx it really was with the shelters being full and people, you know, not being able to surrender animals um, as quickly as they were taking them in as before. But I really wonder what that dog culture is like over there because for puppies to increase in price that much, you know, I remember during the pandemic, I was trying to find a dog for a client and we were looking at breeders, quality breeders for golden retrievers and their wait list was, I'm not shitting you anywhere from three to five years long, three to five years. And then when we switched gears and looked towards um both poodle breeders and rough coat collie breeders it's like they had open availability so it definitely i i haven't i hadn't seen like any increase in price but i know for a fact that there's there's just more demand for certain breeds and that's just gonna increase the more people are, are staying at home so i'm surprised that how quickly i was able to get say a poodle puppy or a rough coat collie versus being in wait list for three to five years for a golden, right? So, um, I mean, prices that I've seen have kind of stayed the same over here. So I'm, I'm wondering, that's really interesting. 
Many dogs have been illegally imported from Ireland, with the port of Carrara in Dumfries and Galloway being used as the main channel. Detective Chief Superintendent Stuart Houston, say that five times fast, of Police Scotland said, Unauthorized breeding is extremely serious and has a significant impact on a dog's welfare. We would urge anyone considering buying a puppy to look into breeders before committing to purchasing. Police Scotland takes this type of activity very seriously and will fully investigate any cases. Puppies brought from unlicensed breeders frequently suffer from behavioral issues, absolutely, congenial health defects, and infectious diseases. Right, so anybody who knows me knows I help people with high quality service dogs and specifically sourcing typically as puppies. And there's a reason why I am so adamant about puppy culture because I've raised puppies from puppy culture and people who put in effort from good quality breeders who put me at that, that early stage effort to make sure those puppies know how to think, how to problem solve, how to be confident, how not to be overwhelmed them, introduce them to crates, car rides, all these things, potty training even. And I've raised puppies from people who do not focus on puppy culture or who provide the bare minimum and continually use pee pads. Like I understand the difference and how much time and effort it takes to potty train a dog who is always pottying on pee pads versus one who is actually litter trained. It, there is no comparison. Um, and one who, because my dog, my personal dog, Reaver, he was puppy culture trained. He was taught manding, which is sitting to ask for things as he was a puppy. The current puppy that I have was not taught manding. And this dog is such a jumper. It has taken at least two months of very consistent and very intentional training and very intentional actions towards this dog to have that jumping become unlikely to happen. It still occasionally happens. We're still getting down there until it's until that behavior is extinguished, but it still occasionally happens. And it's taken two solid months of my very intentional interactions where I do that. So when you, I can, I mean, I can totally see when you buy these kinds of puppies from, and are not intentional about the breeder's intent in raising these puppies. Sure, they can be well-bred, right? Poodle, very well-bred, not very well-raised not very well raised i will tell you that um yeah <laughs> there is a night and day difference um pro prosecutors in the specialist wildlife and environmental crime unit routinely provide advice and assistance to police officers and sspca inspectors a spokesperson for the sspca said our special investigations unit investigated hundreds of reports of puppy farms last year they have successfully raided puppy farms and individuals involved in the greed-driven trade. They have been prosecuted. Oh, awesome. But yeah, like, you know, people who are just in it for the money, literal gangbangers, um, should not be breeding puppies. And for example, there is uh, a couple of stores, last I checked in, in my area, where it is a family who owns a car dealership that are also in the business of pushing puppies out from a storefront right and they are literally treating these dogs as if they're cars because they do not know they do not understand nor do i think they care to understand what it actually takes to raise a quality dog because when you get a car from a car dealership Right, they're just they're 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 just there to to package it up and sell it to you. There are anti-limit laws, right? And there's things to do to correct that. But with these these puppy raiser situations, these these storefront at your mall looking through the window at these cute puppies, it's all impulse purchases, right? That's all this is. This is it's all poor decision making from every single person from step one to the last step until the puppy is sold. It's all poor decision-making by all these individuals. Um, it's just not a well-educated or well-thought-out process. So, um, you know, red flags, there's a few. 
<laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys found that educational. Um, and I guess, you know, please leave your comments down below. Subscribe if you're on YouTube. Um, like and comment if you're anywhere else and you enjoy this content. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.